Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part 9 in building a blog using Ruby on Rails. In this video, we'll learn how to validate our data before it's saved into the database. Uh, we'll also learn how to display those validation error messages. Currently, our app does zero, app, uh, zero validation, so we can submit a post here with an empty title and empty content, and our application doesn't complain. Down here, you can see our empty post. Uh, we do not want this. It says your post was saved, so we want to make sure we validate this data before so that this doesn't happen. Uh, we'll delete this post real quick. And let's switch to our text editor. And you stick your validation inside of your model. So under App, Models, we'll open up our post model. And in here, we can use a method called Validates to validate the fields in our posts table. What we pass to the Validates method are one or multiple fields that we want to validate so we can validate any number of fields in the posts table at one time and then we also just specify the validation rule that we want to apply to those fields so we can say validates title and content and we're going to ensure that the title and content are present before being saved to the database that way they can't leave those fields empty so we'll use the present validator and set that to true. We can also validate the length of a field. So we can say validates title. This time we're just validating one field, not multiple. And we can use the length validation. And we can actually tell it to validate by a minimum length. So we can ensure that the title is at least two characters in length. And we'll do one more. We'll validate that a title is unique. This will ensure that we don't have duplicate blog posts with the same title. So we can validate the title, and we will use the uniqueness validation and set that to true. So now we have a couple of validations here. If we switch to our browser, and we try adding another post, we'll leave it all blank. We can see that it did not save our post, but we're not getting any error messages. It just rendered the form again and that's because we're not actually displaying those error messages yet. So let's change that. We'll need to modify our post's new view. So if we switch to our browser, I'm sorry, our text editor, under Views, Posts, we'll open up our new view. And here's our form. So in here, we can check if our post object here has any errors. So we can say if post.errors and we'll use the any method which will return true or false if we have any errors. If we do, I'll create an h2 tag and we'll say errors and we will display those errors in an unordered list so each error message will be in its own little list item here. We now need to just loop through the errors and display them. Uh, the reason we have to loop through them is because it's possible that there's multiple error messages. So we can do that by going to post, errors, and then we can loop through the full messages. And we can get each message by using this local variable here inside of our block. So now we have each individual error message uh, using this local message variable. And we can just output the message inside of a list item tag. And there we go. So we're checking if we have any errors on the post object. If we do, we're going to loop through them and display the error message. So let's try it out. We'll switch back to our browser. And we can refresh. And there we go. We can see it's saying errors, title can't be blank, title is too short, and the content can't be blank. So let's test this out a little further. Let's just stick one character in the title and some content and add a post. And you can see it says it's too short. Minimum is two characters. So let's change this. We'll say fourth post and add a post. And it worked. So let's now test out the uniqueness validation and ensure that we can't create a duplicate blog post. So we have a post called fourth post. Let's try and duplicate it. And we will hit add a post. Did I click it? There we go. And you can see it says the title has already been taken. Now we need some content for it too. There we go. So the uniqueness validation is working as well. 
something else we can do is we can customize this error message. So let's change it. If we switch back to our text editor in our post model, here's the validation for the uniqueness one. Uh, to change the error message, it's really simple. You just need to modify the value that you pass in for your uniqueness validation here and pass in another hash and you can set its message to be whatever you want. So we can just say already taken for short. And notice that I didn't have to specify true. Uh, it's just implied that I'm wanting to use the uniqueness validation and I'm changing its error message. So we can switch back to our browser, and if we refresh, we'll see this is the old error message, and here's our new one. It says title already taken. Uh, so we now need to just make sure we're displaying error messages on our edit view as well. If we go to our index page, and we try editing a post, and if we get rid of the title, that should be invalid and you can see that it didn't update the post but it's not displaying the error messages here either so let's change that it's really simple this is our new view so I'm just going to copy the code that we created to display our error messages and I'll open up our edit view and then I'll just paste it in here now you may notice that we have a lot of duplicated code uh, our edit view and the new view are essentially identical except for the heading at the top uh, we will address this duplicated code in an upcoming video, uh, but for now we're going to leave it like this, and we'll switch back to the browser and make sure that our editing validation error messages work. So if we try it again, there we go, we now have our errors for the uh, editing page as well. So let's change this back to our first post, and update it, and it works. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.